Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you guys had a wonderful Easter weekend um, with Holy Week and celebrating Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, and especially yesterday, celebrating our risen Lord. I know my family had a wonderful day after worship. Um, we got to spend some time over Zoom with my family up in Minnesota, and then later on in the evening, uh, we played a little game of Yahtzee over Zoom with my sister and her family. Um, we were here in Crystal Lake, and they were up in Oakdale, Minnesota, and it was a lot of fun to kind of reconnect with them. It kind of made us feel um, closer together when we're so far apart, so that was a lot of fun. Um, my plan for the foreseeable future with our devotions on Monday and Friday will be from the book Red Letter Challenge by Zach Zender. Um, I don't know if you've heard of this book before, but it's popular going around in churches right now. A lot of churches are doing it um, for devotions and for Bible study. Uh, the book has 40 devotions um, in it, and each video that I do, we're going to read one of the devotions. We're just going to kind of work our way through the book. So for the foreseeable future, we are going to be doing... Um, these, I hope you enjoy it. Um, I'm just going to read the introduction from the back of the book and then jump right into day one. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, if you want to, I encourage you to maybe pick up this book um, from a bookstore or order it on Amazon, seeing how most stores are not open right now. Uh, but I really encourage you to, to pick up this book and then um, maybe that's a way that you can follow along with me. So, it reads, The Red Letter Challenge is a 40-day discipleship challenge. In the Red Letter Challenge, you will be introduced, through the words of Jesus, to five main principles of being a disciple. If you are tired of just checking religious boxes, if you know that you were made for something more, and if you want to make a greater difference in the world, the Red Letter Challenge is for you. So again, each day I'm going to read um, one of the devotions. This is written by Zach, Zach Zender. So these are his words. They're not coming from me. I might interject here and there, but mainly these are going to be straight from Zach. So day one, being. In this challenge, you will be asked to do many things. But before you can do them, it's important to know why you're doing them and who you are doing them for. I believe truly following Jesus means both being with Jesus and doing the things he asks. Some people are better at being. They like the whole idea of spending time with God, but they never do anything. If I tell my son, go clean your room, he's not going to come back a couple hours later and say, hey dad, I memorized what you said. You said, go clean your room. And he's not going to say, Dad, I know go clean your room in Greek is peo katharos sas dominito. Excuse my Greek. At, that, at this point, I'd be impressed. But that's not going to fly. And he's not going to say, my friends and I are going to gather and study what it would look like if I went and cleaned my room. No, none of that's going to work. So why do we think this is going to work with Jesus? Jesus said, Why do you call me Lord and not do what I tell you? Or do what I tell you to do? Words without actions are never acceptable to Jesus. Faith without actions is dead. On the flip side, there are others who enjoy doing. We think just being is boring. We want to get things done. But if we don't spend time being, our doing won't be as productive. If we don't spend, spend the time resting in God and learning from Him, we'll quickly burn out and our activity will become more about us than about Christ. I remember when I was dating my wife, Allison, we went on a trip with her family to the Chicago Science Museum. 
Allison warned me her dad likes to take 20-minute naps every day, no matter what. Sure enough, he found a bench near one of the dis displays and curled up, and he was out. His eyes were closed, he was snoring, and there was drool dripping down from his mouth onto the floor. Okay, I might have exaggerated that last part. At this point in my relationship with Allison, I was still trying to make a good impression on her family. Apparently, they were all used to their dad sleeping in random places, but I was not. So I volunteered to stay with him. People walked by and gave him weird looks, and then they would look at me. I, of course, acted like I didn't know the man. It was very awkward, but right at 20 minutes, he popped up, awake, and I acted like everything was great. I thought it was crazy. But apparently there is some sci scientific evidence that says those who take naps during the day can actually be more productive. It doesn't seem like slowing down in the middle of a productive work hour would be helpful, but these naps re-energize them so that they can get more work done. Psalm 46.10 says, be still and know that I am God. Many of us don't know how to just be. We know how to do. But we struggle with the being. Before we do what Christ asks us to do, we need to be with him. That's what this first week, or first five devotions, is all about. Spending time with God. So in our being week, or section, we will explore what are called spiritual disciplines. These spiritual disciplines are good habits that allow you to more closely connect to Jesus Christ. These disciplines have been practiced for centuries by those who follow Jesus. The healthiest way to follow Christ and seek him first is for our doing to flow out of our being. Our doing flows out of who we are and who we become when we spend time with Christ. I want to read that one more time. Our doing flows out of who we are and who we become when we spend time with Christ. And in the book, there's a nice little illustration. Here's how I see this playing out in my life. When I spend time with Christ, I can't wait to start doing what he says. When I come to church and worship Christ, it gives me the fuel I need to keep going in life. I found that interesting. It says, when I come to church. I know nowadays we can't come to church, but remember, St. John, we, we live broadcast on Facebook and YouTube, so we could change it. When I attend worship, from my couch at home. It gives me the fuel I need to keep going in life. When I read the Bible, it doesn't take long for it to manifest itself in me, and pretty soon it becomes like a fire shut up in my bones that I cannot contain. I just gotta share it. When I pray, there's a peace that comes over me. I can't explain it. Jesus said many things when it comes to being with him. Over the first full week of the challenge, you'll learn different ways in which you can be with Jesus. So I hope you enjoyed this devotion, um, and I look forward to recording the next one, and it'll be live on Friday. Blessings on your week.